All right. So, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this to this year's uh, introduction course on computer graphics. My name is Wolfgang Hurst, and uh, so today we will start with a general uh, some general remarks on the course organization, and then I will do some basic introduction into some more high level introduction into computer graphics. But first, let's start with some uh, organizational issues. So, uh, as I said, my name is uh, Wolfgang Hurst. I'm a UD at the uh, computer science department in the multimedia and geometry group. So I'm doing mostly work in multimedia. I have a multimedia background, not that much graphics, but I'm doing actually a lot of uh, work in graphics recently too, mostly on mobile devices. Um, by the way, um, I usually address students with uh, with their first name, and uh, it's also fine if you do that. So if you want to, you can also address me by first name. I don't uh, I don't really mind. Good. Um, yeah, so uh, normally when you start a course on computer graphics, you start that by showing some nice graphics. But because I have a multimedia background, I usually show a little video clip first. That's not really related to graphics, but yeah, since I'm a multimedia guy, I like to show funny, funny video clips. Das hier ist mein Sektor. Das hier ist das wichtigste Gerät des Küstenwächter. Das Gerät und das Gerät. Überlebensradar. Can you hear us? Can you okay, over? Me, we are thinking. We are sink. Hello. This is the German Coast Guard. We are thinking. We're thinking. What are you thinking about? <laughs> Good, yeah, so uh, you probably already realized that this lecture is not given in Dutch, but in English, because I'm originally from uh, Germany and I'm still learning Dutch, and uh, what you just saw in the video, that's probably what would happen if I would try to give it in Dutch. So uh, that's uh, the major reason why this lecture is given in English. There are other reasons, of course. Um, even before I took over the course, it was given by a Dutch guy, but even he gave it in English. And the reason was mainly because there are also a couple of GMT students from the master program who are supposed to follow this course, although it is a bachelor course, um, because they come from another university to study here for their master. And uh, they uh, at their university, they didn't have graphics as a bachelor course, so they have to follow this course. But since they are from often from outside and it's an international bachelor, they often don't speak uh, Dutch as well, which is why this lecture has traditionally always been, or, or a lot of times been given in English, even if the speaker would be able to speak Dutch. Um, <clears throat> there are also other reasons why I think it makes a kind of makes sense to have an English uh, in, a, a course in English on the bachelor level, because first of all, I assume that most of you will also uh, are aiming for for a bachelor, uh, for a master, and then when you come to the master and all the lectures are in English, it's kind of, I think, a smoother transition when you already at the bachelor level have a few courses in English, so it's uh, kind of also an advantage for you. And in this case, also the, uh, all the material, our textbook, is in English, and it sometimes uh, kind of also helps if the lecture then is in English, uh, uh, um, because you don't have to switch between the languages then. Good. So there are also a couple of other reasons. So it's not just just me. Good. Um, yeah. So the lectures, there will be two lectures each week. One is, as you all figured out, obviously, on Tuesday morning at nine, always in this uh, room here. The Thursday lectures at quarter past one will be in the Educatorium most of the time in the Teta room. Some of the times it will be in the Mu room. So you have to check the website for, for the location. A few of the times we have to go to this other room. Um, because the uh, because the course, the number of people in the course this year is a lot larger than usual. Um, I don't know how many are here now. It doesn't look that crowded but that's probably because of the early hour and the Easter weekend. But there are more than 200 students registered for this course now. And the problem is you probably know this, that the course was moved from a second year course to a first year course, which is why this year we have the first year students and last year's first year students, so the second year students in the course, so twice as many. And also we got an increase in the in the student numbers because of the gaming bachelor. So uh, we have, uh, <coughs> 
more than 200 students here, which will make the logistic and everything a little more complicated. And also, so it was a lot of uh, trouble to get all the rooms and uh, yeah, also the, the supervisions. We got more teaching assistance for the course this year, but uh, a lot of the things will be a little chaotic because of this, because of the large number, because it's, if you go from 100 to 200 students, it's not just printing twice as many exams in the end. It's uh, there are a lot of like small organizational issues involved that makes it a little more complicated. So just as a warning, uh, uh, be patient with us. Uh, we are trying our best, but there will be a couple of things that don't work as smooth as they usually do. But yeah, we just have to deal with it. Good. Um, yeah, there is another change compared to previous years, um, which is mostly due to the fact that we now have this game technology bachelor. So I assume that about half of you are probably uh, game technology bachelor students. And because of that, we will change the practicals of the course. So we'll do shader programming and we will do the programming in C sharp. So the second year students, they don't, they had Java, I assume, I assume in their, in the first year. Um, so they don't have C-sharp experience. I talked to the to the uh, underwise director about this, but they told me that, uh, yeah, since you are a second year student and this is the end of your second year, you should, we should, uh, we can expect you that you make the transition from Java to C-sharp yourself. And indeed it is actually a quite easy transition. So if you know Java, then you should have no, not much problems to program in C-sharp. Um, some of you or a lot of you probably don't know what XNA is, but uh, yeah, don't worry about it. It's not really that difficult or it doesn't make your life uh, harder. It should make your life easier, if anything. But there might be a couple of these terms that you, you hear now that you're not familiar with. If you have any problems or so, contact the teaching assistants from the practicals. They can help you. Uh, some of them also didn't have any C-sharp experience and they looked at it a little bit before the course and they all were able to figure it out very easily. So it should not be a problem. Good. Um, yeah. The uh, other change that we have this year is that we have a new book or not a new book, but a new edition of the book. It's the third edition of the book, uh, Fundamentals of Computer Graphics by Peter Shirley. And now there's also a co-author, Steve Marshner. Marshner. Um, some of you ask if they can also use the second edition of the book because they can get it uh, cheaper if they buy a used one. Um, I think it is okay. I looked at the new book. There are mostly like, um, I mean, we will not cover the whole book anyhow. We will only cover the basic chapters, which is about 10 to maximum 12 chapters at the beginning of the book. And those didn't really change that much. There are about two, maximum three chapters that changed uh, larger that we will cover. All the rest pretty much stayed the same, but some of the stuff shifted. So parts that was in one chapter is now in a different chapter. So if you decide to take the second year, uh, second edition, then uh, you be aware that you might need to do a lot of uh, searching in the book for the information. I try to let you know where the information is if I if I find it. Um, but uh, it should work out. There there are these two or three chapters that you might then like borrow. Uh, uh, the third edition from someone who bought it and buy him a beer or a cup of coffee for this and then make a copy of those two, two, two chapters. But you should, I think you should be fine with the second edition as well if you want to get that. Um, someone asked if it's also okay to take the first edition. I never had the first edition in my hand, so I can't say for sure, but uh, I know last year a lot of people used the first edition, so I assume it's correct. Uh, it's, uh, it's possible. Um, as far as I know, the difference between the first and the second edition is just that the second edition has another chapter. I think it's chapter four that is not in the first edition. So everything after chapter four is just one chapter below in the first edition. So it should also work out, although I cannot guarantee. Good. And uh, yeah, there are also a few things that will not be covered in the book, but then I will post information on the website about this. And I will also always put information there about what part of the book we studied uh, was covered in the lectures. Good. Um, yeah, as you probably saw, I have this microphone around my head, which is because the lectures will be recorded. I've been doing this for quite some time um, for various reasons. So uh, I will do a screen capture and the audio recording. So no video of me, but uh, the screen uh, capture. So everything you see here, including the annotations, which is why I have this tablet here and the audio, which is why I'm wearing this uh, stupid headset. 
Um, and then I will put the recordings online and you can download them or watch them via streaming. This will usually take a day. At the beginning, it might take a little longer because I'm busy with a lot of other uh, organizational things to set up the practicals or so. Um, and it just takes a little time to, to do the post-processing. So be a little patient at the beginning, but after the first few, uh, one or two weeks, it should be done by the end of the day or the next day. Um, yeah, the... Uh, so uh yeah so so i will stay relatively close to the book i will also do some lecture recordings so i do not really expect you to be here if you say i can learn better by the book or i can learn better by the by the recordings um that's fine with me there are there are professors who always insist that the people go to their lectures um, i'm not one of those um, i think everyone has to figure out for himself or for herself what is the best way for you to learn? And some people learn better with books. Some people learn better by coming here. The only thing I will uh, really, uh, that I think is really important, especially for this kind of course, I think the material from the course is not really that difficult if you look at it carefully. Um, there are a few things which are a little intellectually challenging, but most of it is rather simple. But the problem with this course, I think, is more the amount of stuff that you get here it covers a large range and if you get behind with it then you will probably have problems in the exam so most of the people who fail this course is not because they're too stupid to understand the content but because they are they do not start in time with uh, preparation and with learning the stuff and that is of course particularly dangerous when you rely on the recordings because then it's very easy to say yeah well today I'm busy with something else so let's look at it the recording tomorrow and then tomorrow you have something else and then you push it and push it and suddenly you're one or two weeks behind and then you don't have enough time to catch up before the exam so if you rely on the recordings um, think really carefully about how you use that we did a lot of um, uh, evaluations afterwards and asked the students and uh, most of them very much appreciated it some of them always listened to it some of them only used it to look it up to look up some parts or to listen to parts that they haven't understood very well the first time uh, some of them didn't use them at all some of them didn't use them at all but also said well it was good to have them and good to know if i miss something i can always uh, check it up so this is basically the reason why i'm doing this what i want to say is uh it's an offer from our side just uh be careful uh when you use it um, how you use it, think carefully about how you want to use it in the best possible way that fits your personal need and how you learn the stuff the best way. Uh, another important issue is uh, there is uh, no support from the university from this side, so this is basically my own initiative, um, which for means that for some reasons I might also stop this, so don't rely on it. And also, um, technology can always fail, and if it can fail, at some point it will fail. So far, I've been doing this for the fourth time now. It never failed, which makes it more likely that this year it will fail. So uh, don't rely on this. We might stop with it. And uh, if you don't come to a lecture, but work with the recordings, that's fine with me. But don't come later and complain if there is uh, one course where it, there is no recording. Good. All right. So, uh, so much about the lectures. There will also be tutorials or Werkkollege where... Um, <coughs> Basically, the idea is that for each, uh, let's see, I don't forget anything. Yeah, that for uh, um, for the lectures you get some exercises, and then you can do you get an exercise sheet with exercises about the content from the lecture, and then you can do the exercises to prepare for the exam because the exam will then also contain exercises that are quite uh, similar to what you have in the tutorials. And the idea is that there are fixed time slots where you can go to a room in the BBL, but there will be no lecture like this year, but it's basically you go there and then you sit there and do your uh, ex the exercise yourself or in small groups. But there is a teaching assistant there who is then there to help you and to assist you if you have questions. But it is not like he is lecturing it's more that uh, you're expected to go there yourself which is also why it's uh, voluntarily of course you don't have to go there we will not check if you go there but of course we highly recommend it because um, 
uh, like I said, there is a lot of material in this course and it's important to kind of keep track. So I would recommend to the people who decide to learn with the recordings, at least go to the tutorials because that also puts some pressure on you that you catch up with the, rec with the lecture and don't fall behind. Good, so the, lecture, uh, the tutorials are always after the lecture, in the two hours after the lecture. They start not today, but on Thursday. Um, the, uh, there will be basically one exercise sheet always covers two lectures, which is, means that there are less tutorials than lectures. On some weeks there are no tutorials, so check the website with the schedule where there is a tutorial. Um, also check the website for the location. Some of the tutorials are all in the same room, but some of them switch to another room each week, or not each week, but every other, uh, every other week. So check the website for the date and the location. There are two tutorials this year because, or two teaching assistants this year because we have twice as many students. One of them is a colleague of mine, Robbie Tan, who, spe who also just speaks English, or doesn't speak Dutch, he speaks other languages than English, of course. And uh, Peter de Waal, who speaks Dutch. So if you have a language preference, you can go to either of those. Um, the Osiris system made a group uh, distribution of you, but uh, ignore that. That's just because we cannot turn it off in the Osiris system, but we all don't have really a control over it. It's not really very flexible, this system. So uh, we just say, yeah, just ignore the system and uh, for the tutorial go to whatever tutorial fits your personal needs. So for each uh, tutorial sheet there will be four tutorials and um, you are supposed to go to one of them. So usually there are two tutorials, one after the Tuesday and one after the Thursday lecture because we have twice as many students we have two tutorials in parallel but the tutorials are all the same. If you think you need more time to exercise you are also welcome to go to two tutorials with the same exercise sheet but the idea is basically that you visit one tutorial per week and I didn't make like a, a group uh, uh, in Dailing because I, I thought it's kind of kind of random to do it. So the idea is basically that we hope that it can, kind of works out that you equally distribute over the tutorials. And if you are there on one day and you see the room is already full, then of course you have to go on the, on the other day. So uh, yeah, it's a little, will be a little chaotic at the beginning, but usually we do it like this and it kind of works out. Good, so uh, yeah, one tutorial per week, check the website. Um, you can go whichever you want or wherever there is space. And the participation is voluntarily and highly recommended. Good, yeah, so this is a, a schedule overview. So we have the lectures on Tuesday and Thursday. And then after the lecture, you see here, there are two tutorials, one in English and one in Dutch. And usually they cover the same exercise sheet. So you don't have to go to both of them, just to one of them. And um, then you can go to either the, the Dutch or the English one. Um, also, uh, they they probably have a different style of doing it. I think Robbie uh, prefers to also do some like a lecture style repetition always or some introduction first. I'm not sure if Peter will do, will do that. So uh, yeah, it's also and also some people they explain it dif different people explain it differently. So you might be better off with one or the other teaching assistant. So just try it out and go wherever there is space. And uh, like I said, if one of the tutorials is full, then just go to the one on the next day. And over over the time, it usually evens out quite well. Good. Um, yeah, so normally what, what happens is that uh, you go to one tutorial on one of these dates, and then you go to the practical on the other dates. And the people who go to this tutorial here usually then go to the practical here. But this year, since we have the new situation with uh, 200 students and also because we are changing the practicals to shader programming, that means we need special hardware for this, or not special hardware, we need Windows 7 and uh, new graphics cards, which uh, our ICT department considers as special. So uh, we talked to them and they agreed that they will give us one room with computers for this. And the advantage of the, the good thing about this is, of course, we have this run room for this particular course. So there is no other course in that room. The disadvantage is, of course, it's just one room with 15 computers and we cannot put 200 or 100 people there. So we will not have just this one practical here. So the idea is basically that we say you have the room for the whole week for yourself or for, for this course, which is why the whole 
schedule here is pinkish. And then there will be a few time slots where teaching assistants are around. And the, the practicals are basically the same idea as the tutorials. It's not like a lecture. It's basically you go there, you can do your practicals there. And if you have questions, there is a teaching assistant around and then you can ask them and they can help you. Um, so if you want to work from home or if you say, I don't need help from the teaching assistants, you don't have to go to those time slots. You don't even have to do it in the BBL building, you can do it at home. Um, <clears throat> this is just an offer to go there. And the practicals, there will be definitely one time slot. So so we, we're expecting, we're calculating which 240 students, which is quite optimistic. I think it will be less. But with 240 students, there are, um, <clears throat> there are 15 computers in a room. You're supposed to do it in a team of two. That means we can get 30 people in a room at a time. That means with 250, we need basically eight time slots. So everyone has one time slot where a teaching assistant is around. So what we will do is we'll definitely have a time slot after the lecture. Actually, there is a question mark here that should not be. And then we're, we're currently thinking of making a time slot, two time slots here, two time slots here, but be aware there is still a question mark. I will meet the teaching assistants this afternoon and then we will make the concrete scheduling. Um, and then there will be two more. I don't know if they will be Monday or Wednesday. It also depends on what how your lectures are. And um, then uh, also I know that a lot of you follow the data structures course, which is Thursday morning, but that's probably then a good thing because then all the second year students who have don't have anything as far as I know in Thursday morning can go to that practical and the other can go on Tuesday. So yeah, it, it will basically, uh, the idea is basically we just offer you some time slots and then we hope it kind of works out. Of course, a lot of people will try to go directly after the lecture, but yeah, we will see how it works. If it doesn't work out, then we have to do an assignment. But uh, yeah, my experience with these assignments is usually that if we make a, a group assignment, it's a lot of work, a lot of organization, and in the end, uh, people don't follow it anyhow and go to whenever they have time and space. And so it usually works out, but yeah, usually we have 100 students. Now we have twice as many, so we will see. Uh, there were two questions here. Uh, sorry? Um, you mean if you if you do it at home with your own computer? Um, we are st we are still in the process of of uh, making the new programming assignments. Um, but so far, the rule has always been that you can do it at home, but it has to run on the computers in the BBL room. So uh, I most likely you will take make the same criteria this year, which basically means if you do it at home with a different video card, you just before you turn it in, you have to come here, check it in the BBL. And usually, sometimes it doesn't run, but usually the changes you need to do are not that many. So. Uh, and if it really doesn't work out yet, then we'll see how we how we deal with that. Good. There was another question earlier somewhere here. I forgot. Is that okay? Good. All right. Um, yeah. So for the programming labs, as I said, we have uh, there are five teaching assistants. They all speak Dutch and English. So. Uh, that should also not be a problem. They start on Thursday after the lecture, so there will be no pro programming assignments on Thursday morning. We will put the first assignment online on Thursday around the time of the lecture. And then afterwards, there is the first practical, but as you see here, there's just these two hours. So not many of you uh, will be able to go there, but then the next week, there will be a lot of uh, opportunities then hopefully. Good. Um, the uh, yeah, the first practical assignment will be more like a high level tutorial that is also more for those people who don't have C sharp and XNA experience that they kind of uh, get uh, started up. Good. Um, yeah. Anything else here that I forgot to say? No. Oh, the room is uh, BBL 175. Didn't say that. 
Good. Yeah. So the practicals for the practicals, there will be different assignments, most likely three of them. But uh, like I said, we're still in the process of setting it up, so it's not 100% sure. The first one will basically be more like do a tutorial on graphics programming to get you started. Um, all the assignments you have to turn in and they give a final grade, which counts 40%. No, that's not true. It counts one third for your final grade. I don't know how this 40% came here. Good. It counts uh, one third for your percent. Grades from last year, students who do this course again do not count. That has always been the case this year. Of course, it it is also a, a completely new practical, so it will also not count. Um, teamwork, it has been a tradition of this course that the practicals are done in teams of two. Because of the large amount of students, uh, we were also handling this very strictly and actually even put in this uh, penalty of uh, one point if people refuse to do that. And that was because I had the impression that some people take advantage of this, that they basically ignore what we tell them. And then the day before the assignment uh, was due, they came, oh, by the way, I didn't realize that I have to do it with two people and I just did it alone, or, but I think it's no problem, right? And uh, if we don't announce it in advance, then it's kind of, yeah, we don't want to kick, him out, kick people out because of that. But on the other hand, uh, uh, especially when we get the impression that they do it and that they miss this information on purpose, it's kind of annoying. So we basically said we make, um, make it a requirement that you do it in teams of two. This year, because we have such a large amount of students, I will say we also allow that you do it in teams of three students. But the ideal case, I think, would be two students. And one of the reasons why this, uh, so this was all already done before I took over the course. I basically took this uh, uh, setup from my predecessor. And uh, the reason is that we said it is, uh, it is also important for you to learn how to work in a team. And uh, that is, for example, why a lot of people then complain and say, yeah, but I have bad experience with teamwork. And uh, of course, that is not a reason. If the purpose is to learn to work in a team, then, um, sorry, I'm just, I think I missed something. Okay, no, yeah. Uh, if the purpose is to learn teamwork, then uh, of course I have bad experience with teamwork is not a good excuse to do it alone. Um, if there is really a very good uh, reason to do it alone, let me know, but uh, most of the time there isn't, so then you have to do it in teams of two. Good. Um, if you have problems finding a partner, contact the TTA, T teaching assistants in the practicals after the lecture, because if all the people who don't have a partner go there, then it's easy to team them up. Um, if you lose your partner during the course, it always happens that sometimes some people drop the course, then let me know and then we will make a decision if you then will do it alone or if we know people who also lost their partner and then we can bring you together. That usually also works out quite well. Good. And yeah, just for the record, uh, I think it's obvious you're not allowed to reuse or copy code. If there are parts of the assignment where you can copy code, then you have to really explicitly note that because of course it's uh, dishonest and we use, we check that. And if we realize that you're cheating either in the exam or in the practicals, you're in trouble. Yeah. To your own code. Um, Actually, it's a good question. We haven't made the decision yet. The, the last, uh, I, I think you refer to, you did something earlier and then you want to reuse it. Um, for the first part of the assignment, it will be uh, like solving certain things where you cannot really reuse much anyhow, unless you find a solution to it somewhere online. But there will be a second part where we, uh, where you can, uh, a final part where you are also free to do whatever you want or to do something that goes beyond the assignment. And for that, actually, I already realized that it's a problem that some people might just reuse stuff they had they have already implemented somewhere earlier. So we haven't really decided yet, but uh, we will see how to deal with that. Good, okay, so the practical is one part of your, um, of your final grade, but the other will be, of course, the exams.
There will be a midterm exam on May 24th that covers most likely the first five lectures and there will be a final exam on uh, July 5th that covers the rest of the lectures. Actually it's not Not 100% sure if there will be 12, there might be 13 or 14. If you look at the schedule, we have time slots for, I think, 16 lectures, but traditionally I've only given 12. And then the week before the exam, I usually uh, said there are no lectures, so you have time for preparation. Um, but I might, uh, I always use this also as a buffer, so sometimes uh, you run over time and then you have another lecture to cover up. Good. Um, yeah, and the grade will both midterm and final exam will grade e equally. Um, if you can make it to the exam for reasons like some people have a conflict with another course or, or other things, they, I don't know, have to go to hospital or so, let me know. And then usually you get the exception that you then can just take the retake instead. Good. Um, all this information can of course always change so always check the website for the final information so the website is always where I will announce all the formal stuff so the website I mean the course website not the Osiris website and the CS website because those systems are really uh, horrible to manage so I put up a separate web page for this course which went online yesterday and this is always where I will announce changes and important things also in relation to the exams Good, and then the final grade will be, as I said, one-third the practicals and two-thirds then obviously the exam. Um, minimum grades to pass is for both the exam and the practicals at least five before rounding, and the final grade needs to be at least a six after rounding, so if you pass, have 5.5 you will pass the course with a six. Um, to qualify for the retake you have to have, uh, you have to participate in the practicals and the two exams first, unless you got an exception granted, and you have to have at least a four. So these are basically the standard rules that you have for most of the courses. Good, the retake will be August 18th. And like I said, refer to the website for further information. Good, on the website you also find the schedule. Uh, so you see here, uh, uh, well, not very well, but um, we'll have three lectures. Then next week, Thursday, is a holiday, so there is no lecture. And here is the midterm exam, and that means also that there is no lecture here. And um, the tutorials start on Thursday. And you see here there is the tutorial one is basically then two dates, two, Thursday and Tuesday. So if you don't go on thir Tuesday, uh, Thursday, you can go on Tuesday. Then because of this holiday here, it switches to Tuesday and Thursday. But it's, I think, pretty clear that it's uh, one week, so four options to go to a tutorial. The first assignment will be online on, Tuesday, on Thursday, sorry, and then you have about two weeks to solve that, and then we will see about the other assignments later. So as I said, uh, uh, I always stretch this because I realize that a lot of people don't do this, although I constantly remind them to do that. The website is the, uh, one of the major things of the communication for this course for everything that is last minute, that is important, uh, related to dates, deadlines and everything. Or if I make a mistake here, then I correct it on the website. And uh, there's, there are these different categories, the schedule, lectures, tutorials, practicals. But if I post something here, I always make a note at the news section. So if you follow the first site, if you every now and then look at the first entry side of the website, you always see if there is anything new here, anything important. If I, for example, make an update on the grading conditions or so, I also announce it here. So you just have to watch this first site. I just say it because uh, it often happens that people just send me emails and uh, about the information that I just posted a few days ago on the website. So make sure that you check that. <clears throat> Good. Um, are there any questions about the organization so far? No? Good. Then uh, I would say that uh, we pro it's probably, we like usually we make 45 minutes with 15 minutes break in between. But because I start with the actual content now and it's already 10 minutes till the break, I would say we make an early break today and then we meet in 15 minutes to the second part. All right. <clears throat>